Three, two, <laughs> one. Guitar player, vocalist, lyricist, <laughs> wordsmith. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Matthew, uh, guitar, weird noises. Three. Rob, bass and transport. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I'm management, I guess. Joff, <laughs> uh, <Josh>, drummer. <clears throat> did have really long discussions over it and I think there are videos that are like 20 minutes long of us talking about band names um, but then I think my notebook was open in the practice room and Matt said that's all right and I think that's basically <laughs> what it was I think it was almost kind of accepting the defeat but I think yeah. as time has gone on I think you know I think it, it works really well I think so. it's quite funny how you spend so long agonizing over a band name and then when you finally see one you're not that precious about it like, oh that'll do despite <laughs> agonizing over it for so long but yeah I quite like yeah. it I don't really know what it means it's mm. not really a meaning to it so we're at the fish tank which is a communal practice space uh, used by several different Portsmouth bands um, it's kind of off the, off the grid so to speak it's not a proper practice space it's a repurposed um, unit. Uh, this used to be a wrestling school actually back in the day and there's still remnants of the ring and uh, wrestling instructions on the wall and stuff like that. Uh, old posters up on that wall up there. Um, but yeah for now it's kind of used predominantly as a as a practice room but it's also doubled up as a as a venue recently for donation only DIY <laughs> shows and it's also yeah it's being used as a recording studio today. A channel. Uh, yeah, I, I've come round to it a bit more now. It's got the bass and stuff on it. It's got a nice chunk to it. I'll, I'll still go over it again with the yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that one of the first gigs where I saw Matt and Joff, who played in the band before we got together, was actually here. It was a battle of the bands. No, it wasn't a battle of the bands. It was a Devil's Road show. That was it. Mm. And they they were the headline band. And uh, yeah, I remember. Something. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not headline, just the last. Band. You were the last. <laughs> you were the final band before the doors closed. But um, I remember immediately thinking, seeing them maybe once or twice, that oh, I'd like to be in a band of these guys. So this place has some significance there and then there's also that with the bands and things that we've been involved with and other gigs so yeah it's uh, it's the centre of music really here yeah. in Portsmouth yeah. at least for smaller bands it's the, the place where we can all come together because other venues are just too big yeah, cool. I mean just to piggyback on the back of that is um, 
that show actually uh, in the band we played in. Remember when we first started out, I thought and said probably a number of times, if we play the Wedgwood Rooms, that's it. We we've made it. You know, that's that was it. That was you know. I, I thought it was impossible. I genuinely thought it was impossible for a while. Like as a teenager, you kind of think, "Oh, I want to play the Wedge of Dreams," and I, I hope people still feel that way if they do start yeah. bands and stuff. And when I, you know, finally did play here, it was yeah, incredibly exciting, and yeah, it was brilliant. Oh, I I Probably not allowed to do gigs near legally, but yeah, you know, what's what's the you know, nothing's going to stop you from yeah. doing it. I think I mean, in the end, we, if they we're keep always careful to do it on a Friday night, so um, the well, police the, have got much more interesting and violent things to do in Guildhall. Yeah, it's usually invitation only, quite private. But the thing is, if they're going to keep closing down venues, where else are people going to play? Mm. So people are hopefully, uh, that's my, my hope anyway, is that once that you know more venues close, that more people start doing DIY punk shows in odd locations and places that you wouldn't usually expect gigs because, I mean, all you really need are some amps, a, a source of power. You can play anywhere you want, as long as you do it really quickly and uh, you know don't cause too much fuss. I mean, we've we've played house pipe before, which is pretty fun. Um, but again, we do it on a fr- if you're going to do something like that, do it on a Friday night when the police can't. You know, the police have got more things to worry about. And even then, if you do that, if you do that, then if you play loudly enough, you're not going to hear the door knock. So that's what happened when we played a house party. The police did come. We heard after. But we couldn't hear him through the through the door because we were playing so loud, so they just moved on. Try it. Um... The, the, the York page stuff is quite sharp. <laughs> Maybe in the last verse you could add. Oh, no, so we'll we'll could find add some noisecapes though, because there's also room for the chaos pad, and that'll be quite cool. I so I'll just do it with two octaves. No, no, I really moment. don't think we should overdo it on this one, just because it's not on else this one. Crazy no. enough as it is. Although the noise, the noise full of punches might work in the final. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The bands that really stuck out to me that I loved, like Captain Beefheart and Frank Zappa and things like that. I I didn't feel like that was music. That was something people made. I thought it was just for these strange characters that you couldn't really kind of get be a part of and it wasn't for a long time until I really started to think well we don't need to make music like other people are making you can do what you want and be as haphazard or as lazy or as involved as you want and it just went from there really it's I can't really explain it because it's it's like it's almost like magic but but not but do you know what, you know what, what I mean? What the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? Well, I don't know, because like, <laughs> you can't say this is the reason why I do it, because there is no Imagine. reason, really. It's <laughs> If I had an answer, like, oh, I do this because, then, you know, I don't. I just do it because I do. <laughs> what in the fuck was that? Did you forget to turn your whammy off? Definitely. <laughs> Sounds like a hit, guys. How about something in the gaps? But I don't know if that might. Be. So uh, what? Like if I sort of it might like. <laughs> That's like complicating it a little bit. Because I like that. The thing I like about that that kind of chorusy bit is the simplicity of the guitar bit you know it's yeah, yeah, more yeah. more rhythmic as opposed to less going on less uh, mm. I think keep it like that um, okay. I don't know if I think the first one should be left but the outro needs stuff oh yeah the outro probably needs thickening yeah, yeah. definitely and I was just thinking you know the you know the bit that's uh, oh, uh, you know they can set the second time round, the third time round is it even where it gets thicker. Yeah, yeah. I want to add more guitar to that bit. Where like, I kick the fuzz. Just a, a stronger drone, like go do another yeah, drone, yeah. do one maybe even like two octaves up or something like that. Like, yeah, I'm like, gonna thicken my drone. I'm I'm gonna thicken up what I'm doing. I remember when I met these guys and they're just fresh out of school. 
and uh, at the time there was a lot of things like Rant Magazine, which was kind of a youth orientated thing about publicising local bands, particularly like teenage bands. And there was venues like Indigo, which are you know under eighteen oh, God. venues. Oh, God, and, yeah. and yeah, these guys and other bands played there. I never played. I never even went there, but um, I didn't know that well kind of existed until I met these guys. But the, I think there was more of an initiative on young people making music back then. But I guess the council had more money back then or creativity was more on the, the cards back then but I think that kind of fed into the school thing and it fed into I think it did feed into ideas of being successful for a lot of those bands not all of them but um, but there definitely was more kind of incentive to actually go out and make a band even just on the social side it did feel like there was a lot more encouragement I think um, from adults around you definitely Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I know what I'm doing with that. Cool, that's good.